This is my Mac, which is super optimized in every way to be a productivity machine. In this video, I'm gonna show you my full productivity Mac setup, which includes the keyboard shortcuts that I use, my browser and extensions that I use for social media, and the best apps I found for productivity and how it all comes together. Previously, I made videos about my modern dumb phone setup and even my Apple Watch setup, but I thought in this video, I would make a video on my productivity Mac setup because it's probably the device that I use the most throughout the day. By doing this, I've now been able to spend more time with my girlfriend, continue to study Japanese, work on my other hobbies, and now start a company. For me, the number one thing that I optimize for on my computer is to reduce distractions and save time. Some of these core apps and principles come from my time working as a tech consultant, but it also works well for what I'm doing today. I would say it probably is the best if you do any sort of knowledge work. The reason why it's pretty important to me to have a optimal productivity setup is because I'm building a tech startup full-time with James Schultz, who's right here. Uh, we're actually at the stage right now where we need help with beta testing. Like we finished the MVP of our app. So if you want to help out with that, check out the link in our description. I do quite a bit of coding regularly, so... I also want to show some neat applications I use in the terminal. They're probably apps that you'll never see in a YouTube productivity setup. After I introduce each application, I'll show you how I set it up and how I use it. But as always, there will be timestamps, so feel free to skip around. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is reducing distractions. And for me, the biggest distraction that I get on my computer are social media and messages and email. So I'm going to show you how I optimize it and what apps I use to reduce those distractions. The first one is this app called Cold Turkey. So it's basically a blocker that you install on your computer and you can block different websites or different applications. You can set that on a schedule or you can set that on permanently. And you can make it so you can't remove or delete the program. So how I have it set up is that I have three different block lists. One is called Algorithmic Feeds, Deep Work, and Unproductive. If you want to use the exact same block list as me, I'll include it in the description. The first block list, Algorithmic Feeds, it only blocks the home feed of all social media websites. So this means that you can still look up videos, you can still open up a link if somebody sends it to you, but you aren't able to access the home feed and be fed an algorithmic algorithm. I find that this is super helpful in just completely removing the addictive aspect of social media and making it work for me and not against me. The second block list, that I've set up is called Deep Work. So this basically just blocks all email and messaging apps so that when I'm actually doing deep work, I'm not being sucked into any notifications. And the last block list is what I call unproductive. So these are basically sites that I pretty much never want to go to that basically don't bring me any benefit. And for you, this could be things like corn, it could be like gaming sites or certain type of tabloid or news sites. And I just try to block that for as long as possible. I tried a bunch of different types of block lists and this is what works for me. And with each of these blocks, you can set up a schedule, you can lock it with a password. So it's really useful if you find that you're using social media too much or you're being distracted and you wanna block it for the whole week or month. But the second cool thing about this app is something called Frozen Turkey. It allows you to set up a block on your computer itself. So you can set a schedule where past a certain time, you are locked out of your computer. And I've set it up so that I'm pretty much forced to go to bed on time so that I get good sleep. Next, I want to show you the extensions I use in my browser to make social media websites not addicting at all. So first, let me show you youtube.com. This is what my YouTube looks like. I've set it up so that I don't actually see the thumbnail. I see a screenshot from the middle of the video. And there's also no infinite scrolling. So I only see six videos. And if I wanted to see more recommended videos, I have to refresh it. When I actually click on a video, these are like, there's nothing recommended on the side and there's not even profile pictures for the comments. So it makes it easy to focus on the video and not be sucked into any other rabbit holes. There's no shorts. There's nothing on the sidebar. And for me, this is the only way that YouTube is even usable. The way I do this is with this extension called Untrap for YouTube. So it's on Chrome and Firefox. I've talked about this extension before because it's actually compatible with both iOS and Android. So you can also set up something like this on your phone, which is what I've done as well, if you wanna check out that video. There's a ton of options you can do to customize your YouTube page, including setting a schedule, like time limit, making it so there are no thumbnails or the videos in grayscale. Compared to a lot of different social media websites, I think YouTube is one of the good ones. Like I consistently learn a lot of new things on YouTube and 
whenever I don't know how to do something, there's always a video I can find where somebody shows me how it's done. It's just that the default YouTube is hyper optimized to keep you on the platform and to suck you into different rabbit holes. But if you just install this extension and you install cold turkey for times when you want to block it completely, it really becomes an amazing search engine. The same developer of that extension also has one called Social Focus. It's just like the YouTube one, but it has customizations for every other social media website. So for example, on Twitter, this is what it looks like without the algorithm, where there's a bunch of different stuff going on. And this is what it looks like with the extension installed. It makes it a lot cleaner and a lot less distracting. So you can use this to customize different aspects of Instagram, Facebook, X, and Reddit. The third extension I use is actually an ad blocker called uBlock Origin. So what's cool about this extension is it allows you to block different components of the website. So if you just right click and you click block element, you can select a certain thing and it'll never show up again when you go to this website. So how I've used this is that for websites like Amazon, for example, where usually when you go there, there's a bunch of different recommendations of things that you should buy. I've set it up where I blocked everything except my browsing history. So just things that I've looked up. And this makes Amazon not addicting. Like Amazon should not be addicting. Let me just turn off the extension and see what it looks like. It's recommending me a thousand different products based on just something I briefly looked at. And I think it's really easy to get lost going to the website and spend a lot of money that you otherwise wouldn't. This extension works on every website. So if there's a website where there's something distracting, you can just use this feature and block that element completely. The last browser extension I want to share for reducing distractions is not actually for social media, but it's this new tab page. So it just shows a counter of my age in real time. And it's just a constant reminder to me to really use my time wisely and not waste it. It's called mortality. And you enter in your birthday and then it just starts counting up. Maybe this might not work for you, but this is really motivating for me. The next thing I want to show are the way I've set up keyboard shortcuts for Mac. So one of the applications I use most is called Alfred. So Alfred is really useful for it just launch applications and looking stuff up without having to use the mouse. It replaces Spotlight on the Mac. And with a keyboard shortcut, it has this pop-up. It has all the features of Spotlight with more customization. So for example, I can open a folder really quickly. I can search for a file on my computer really easily. I have an extension on this where I can look up a Japanese word instantly. I can set a timer like that with a timer message. And in a minute, it'll show up fully on my screen. So yeah, that's pretty useful for me. There's a whole community online of different extensions and plugins you can install for Alfred, which is why I think it's way more powerful than Spotlight. And it's hard to go back to using a computer without this installed for me. The second app that I use for keyboard shortcuts is called Better Snap Tool. So this basically just brings a window feature to Mac, which is being able to resize a window by snapping it to different corners. So I can use my keyboard and make it full screen to the left or to the right, or I can just drag it to the right. And this is really useful when you have multiple things open and you don't want it to be so disorganized. So I can have like my browser here, my to-do list there, and it makes it easy to organize the computer. Generally, as a rule of thumb, I try to use the cursor as little as possible. And even for programming, which if you do any programming, I'll show you how I do that later. I think you can save a ton of time by not using the cursor. Besides these two things, a lot of the ones I use are just inbuilt ones into Mac, like Command H to hide the window, Command Option D to show the dock, Alt tabbing for different tabs, or Command Shift brackets to go through different tabs on the browser. Now I want to talk about three of my favorite productivity apps that I use on my computer. For to-dos, I've talked about this um, a little bit in some other videos, but I use this app called Things 3. It's super minimal. There's no subscription fees or distractions, and it just works. There's a keyboard shortcut that you can access from any page on your computer to add it to do, which is just option space. So I can have something like, like that, set it for today, and click enter, and then it'll show up in my to-do. So from a workflow perspective, it makes it really easy to really quickly add something if something comes up, and just to check it out or think about it later. To-dos can be organized into different areas or projects and those projects and to-dos can have individual deadlines. So for example, this is a deadline coming up. I can click in and see the things I need to do and they're also organized by different sections. It follows 
this system called the GTD system. In some of my other videos, I talked about analog versus digital to-do systems. And I think for stuff like complex projects or stuff with deadlines, it's really a lot more modular and easy to use when you have a digital system. My second favorite productivity app is a note-taking app called Obsidian. If you've never heard of Obsidian before, it's a super powerful note-taking system. When I'm learning something or I want to do some research in something, I'll take notes in Obsidian. It'll probably take another whole video to show how Obsidian works entirely and how I've set it up. But to give you a quick overview, you can really easily make a note like this. You can have backlinks to different days or different notes. And you can open them. I've used Obsidian to take notes on music theory, economics, and some of my other interests. But What's really cool and satisfying is the graph view. Here I've taken notes on the Federal Reserve. What I like about Obsidian compared to other note-taking apps like Notion is that you can set it up so that you never have to touch the mouse, like including navigating throughout the entire document. You can use Vim shortcuts. You can search stuff up really quickly and go through different tabs. And also all the notes are stored locally on your computer. So this makes it more secure and also makes it super fast when you want to look something up or take notes. The third app I want to share is a text aggregation app called Text. So what this app does is basically you can log into all of your different messaging apps and it aggregates them all into one place. Everything's done locally, so none of the messages are being sent to their servers. And it's really useful to have all of your messaging and notifications in one space. So I use this regularly as my main messaging app. So the last set of apps are in the command line. So for programming, and James helped me set this up, but I use a combination of something called Tmux and NVim. Tmux basically allows you to have split screens and you can have as many as you want. Yeah, right here, I have NVim here as my code editor and I can have different tabs, like I can have the server running on the right. What I like about Vim, which uh, this took quite a while to learn, is that once you get used to it, you can navigate everything using just the keyboard. So like going through different lines, like highlighting multiple blocks of code, none of this requires me to use the mouse. And this has just been a huge productivity time saver. You can also enable these Vim shortcuts in Obsidian. So that's how I also use Obsidian without ever touching the mouse. Basically, all of my productivity setup is to reduce using the cursor on the computer because it just takes a lot of time to like type and then go back to the mouse, type and go back to the mouse. Whereas if you can just stay on the keyboard, you can save a lot of time. But yeah, that's it for this video. Let me know what you think if you try any of these out. And lastly, I want to say, this is just what I found to be really productive and what works for me. It probably won't be exactly the same for you, but I encourage you to try it out, see what works, see what doesn't work, and to find your own productivity setup so that you can save time and focus on the things that you really want to focus on. If you have any other recommendations for productivity apps or how you set up your computer, definitely let me know. I would love to try them, but I'll see you in the next video and go check out uh, our new website, link in the description. Let's get it.